really what a shock wave is, is an instantaneous change in pressure. And so that change of pressure uh, propagates through the air, from the aircraft down to the ground, and our ears hear that, and uh, that's what we perceive as sonic booms. This is the crew brief for uh, Sysboom Da Flight 1. The objectives for today is the real-time display of the sonic boom ground footprint in the rear cockpit of the F-18. We have seven different recorders out in the field that we'll be using, and we want to, you know, to record sonic booms, and I'll be the one communicating with the control room, communicating with the rest of the project team as to the test points that we want to fly. Ready. Mark. Mark, rolling. Mark, please copy Mark. Copy Mark. Okay, uh, one, uh, repeat on the same one. Repeat. That's affirmative, uh, repeat. So my role is right in the back seat, and I have the tablet that displays where the boom is hitting the ground. I'm giving the pilot feedback. Um, speed up, slow down, just sort of get the boom where we want it to be. You want to get your flight path in the right place in, in space. The scientists, of course, want this as accurately as possible. We've got GPS receivers measuring things within at least 10 feet. We aren't going to hit 10 feet accuracy every time, except <laughs> if we're lucky. But we get as, most, as many of the parameters as close as we can, and then the, the scientists can work the data out and see how See how we did, but uh, more importantly, see how the algorithm did and see whether the display is working correctly. 1.3. Copy, showing 1.3. Awesome, we're there. This is the cockpit display for the Cockpit Interactive Sonic Boom Display Avionics, or Sysboom Da. Start to generate uh, the impact area where the sonic booms hit on our ground. Over here, we had a bunch of sensors on the lake bed to measure uh, the effect of the sonic booms. And uh, for the test, we were looking at how the uh, real-time display predicts the sonic boom, where it hits, when it hits, and uh, the intensity of the boom. That's shown by the colors. And we compare that to measurements on the ground. Oh, we got one. We got one. Got four miles past. Test point complete. Uh, we did see ISO pass. We're good to uh, proceed to the next row. The next pass, we're going to do what we call our low boom dive. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but uh, the aircraft actually flies at about 49,000 feet subsonically, does a dive, uh, an inverted dive to reach supersonic speeds, and then recovers. That's our low boom dive. We use it a lot in our testing to simulate what a low boom demonstrator or a low boom uh, aircraft might sound like. Mark. Copy, Mark. What PC Boom and Sysboom Da does to compete where the boom's going, on the Mach number of the aircraft, you have a certain shaped Mach cone, kind of like a uh, wake coming off a motorboat, a V-shaped wake. But in an aircraft, it's a three-dimensional cone. Starting with Bravo, please report what you heard. So what we're trying to do is design aircraft that produce quieter sonic booms, or as we were calling them, low booms. If we're able to do that, hopefully we can get some of the regulations changed so that we can have uh, sonic booms over land, but just a lot quieter sonic booms over land. Mark, 